cracker. You've just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, it's red hot and ready, and today we're going to the staff party. But you're not invited, cracker. Okay, today we're gonna make a bunch of different hors d'oeuvres we can pass around the office to tickle your coworkers fancy. We got bacon wrapped organ meat, we got some stuck up shrimp, but first we gotta make some cornbread to lay down a base for all that drinking. And I'm gonna be in the backyard chatting up with the staff. We're gonna see if they know their stuff about barbecue tips, and I know Cracker does. So come on back, let's take a dive into the secretarial pool. But hey, you might wanna watch out for Dorothy in the county. I hear she was a man. Okay, there we are, on the photocopier, and I'm saying, hey, does this thing enlarge or what? I knew it looked familiar. What are we doing? We're having a staff party today, okay, what does that mean? Well, obviously this means twice a year the boss is springing for you to get pissed, which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing, okay? What we have to do today is we have to maintain control. We have to take total responsibility for our actions, okay, and hope that others don't. This is why we're making cornbread today. We're gonna lay down a base so we can get a couple drinks in this. Drink along with the best of the drinkers, but they haven't had the cornbread. That's the secret, okay? They're gonna make total fools of themselves, and you get to make fun of this throughout the rest of the year. Take advantage, take pictures, take them for a trip. Take them to the back room. That's probably gonna happen anyway, so let's get right to it, to the cornbread. Okay, we're making savory cornbread with cheese and jalapeno peppers. This is our base, okay? We're gonna start it off. We got a cup of milk. Straight in, any kind of milk. It doesn't matter as long as it's milk. It's into the bowl. We got some egg yolks, okay? That's three egg yolks. We got a little bit of salt. And let's just speed this process up. We got a little butter. We got four tablespoons of butter. We got some scallions. That's about a quarter cup of scallions right there. Quarter to half a cup. We got some jalapeno peppers, which need to be chopped, okay? You can leave them whole, but that's gonna be a bit of a surprise, like dropping the bomb in your taste buds when they're not expecting it, okay? You don't want too much spice, otherwise tomorrow morning, not only the beer coming out in a funny way, the peppers are coming out too. You don't wanna be the, on the receiving end of that, do you? Okay, got that in there. We got some garlic, one clove of garlic, finely minced, in there. I got some cheese, half a cup of grated cheddar cheese. We got some parsley, that's a quarter cup as well. We got some baking powder, okay? That's three tablespoons, uh, pardon me, three teaspoons of baking powder, a little bit of paprika. This is Mr. Spatula. We got a cup of corn meal, okay? Same as polenta, same thing. And we got one cup of self-raising flour. This is so easy, man. All we gotta do is stir the stuff up. And this is our friend, remember this. Treat it well, because it's gonna treat you well. Okay, this is ready to go into our pan. We've got a non-stick baking pan here. And we're just gonna, actually you know what I'm gonna do? Safety first, guys. Let's put just a little bit of oil in here. Even though it's non-stick, you know, it's not 100%. So just take a rag, paper towel, golf shoe, doesn't matter. Just wipe the oil around the pan. And then we're gonna put this stuff in, straight in. Nice thick consistency. This doesn't have any yeast in it. It's being leavened by baking powder and baking soda, which is in the self-raising flour, okay? Okay guys, we're gonna throw this on the grill, but when I come back, we're wrapping our organs in bacon. You know the secretary's gonna love that. You know, a little bit of shorthand. Have you ever had a dry rub? This probably sounds a lot more exciting than it actually is. If you were up to par on your barbecue terminology, you would know that a dry rub is actually a spice mixture that's rubbed into the meat before cooking and it acts as a, a dry marinade. Barbecuing is truly a global method of cooking and it's been around for ages, so it's no surprise that there's lots of terms and expressions used in describing the different facets of barbecuing. Later on, we're gonna quiz the crew on these terms from around the world, so stick with us. We're gonna show you how to correctly jerk your pork. Dirty, dirty boys. From Hamburg to your burg, it's all about the meat here on Red Hot. 
hot and ready. Gonna get me some bacon. Oh. I need a bacon house. I'm living in a bacon cave. Oh. Okay, we're back. I'm sorry, guys. I just, uh, it was a throwback to my childhood. We weren't allowed to play with anything but liver in a warm milk bottle, okay? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Hell no! One thing about these livers is you have to trim them down a bit. There's a little bit of sinew in here, okay? That is not edible, really. There's a little bit of fat there. That's nice. That's the juicy bit. So you remove those little bits. The rest of these livers look pretty good, okay? Oh, look at that. You got a bile sack there. That's something that you don't see every day, is it? I gotta get my hands on some of those. Okay, we got a little bit of sherry here. Got a quarter cup of sherry. Straight in. We got some soy sauce. That's about three tablespoons. We got some minced ginger. Actually, this has been grated fresh ginger. That's about, probably about a half an inch long piece of ginger off the ginger root that's been grated there. And we got a tablespoon of brown sugar. Okay. I'll just use my hands. Just mix it all up gently that you don't destroy the liver. So we have some marinated livers here. These have been sitting around for about probably a good hour and a half. That's long enough to develop the flavor. You can leave them in for a couple days and that's gonna actually act as a preservative as well. Here's what we do. We take these out. These ones weren't quite trimmed properly. Get yourself a piece of bacon. And this is gonna add a fantastic smoky flavor to this when we throw it on the grill. It's just a little hors d'oeuvre. You roll it up just like that with the bacon. Grab yourself, actually I'm gonna put another piece of bacon around it too, because livers love bacon. And just gonna thread it through like this. Simple as that. I'm gonna throw this on the grill, and what's gonna happen is that the bacon's gonna cook down, get nice and crispy on the outside. It's gonna be based in the liver, which doesn't have any natural fat on it really. So it's gonna be nice and juicy, and when the bacon's done, the liver's gonna be cooked to probably about a perfect medium or a medium well. Normally you could eat livers medium rare if they're good and fresh, but in this case, considering you know, they're gonna be sitting around on a plate being passed around as hors d'oeuvres, you wanna have them cooked at least medium to medium well. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some shrimp skewers as another hors d'oeuvre, okay? These are shrimp skewers with a mountain rum glaze. We got some 21, 25 count shrimp here. Okay, what that means is that there's between 21 and 25 of these babies per pound, okay? These have tails on them, I'm gonna remove those because if you have the tail on them, it's a very handy way to eat them if you've sauteed them or something like that, you pick them up by the tail. But we're throwing them on the stick, so we don't need that. Let me show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take these off. We're gonna add bacon to this as well, okay? Because shrimp don't have a very high fat content either. Almost no fat, it's just pure protein. A lot of cholesterol, but no fat. So you're just gonna wrap the bacon around these babies, like that. Take yourselves a skewer making sure that you're poking through the bacon and the tail of the shrimp at the same time, and then going through the bacon and the top part where the head used to be of the shrimp. So it's gonna hold the bacon in place. The bacon is gonna do the same thing it does for the, uh, for the livers. It's gonna baste this, and it's gonna get a beautiful sort of smoky flavor. Okay, but that's enough of that. What I promised you was a rum mountain glaze, and a rum mountain glaze ye shall receive. We got our rum. That's a half to three quarters of a cup. Straight in, that's an amber rum. Actually, it's a Jamaican rum, that one. And we're putting in a little bit of Dijon mustard. That's a quarter cup. That's gonna thicken it up a bit, also add a nice little zest, you know? It tastes fantastic on these shrimp. Okay, got a little bit of butter. This is gonna keep everything nice and greasy. That's the way we like it, right? And we got a half a cup of brown sugar, straight into the pot as well. No particular order, don't worry about it, just toss it in the pot, get it hot, and then rub it on your shrimp, okay? Shrimp love it when you do that. I'll try. A little bit of salt, some cracked black pepper. Okay guys, that special ingredient that I threw in there just a second ago that I didn't tell you about was actually cloves, a teaspoon of whole cloves. That's gonna give it a really nice sort of Caribbean flavor. This is gonna be reduced down now by one quarter. That means just boil it down, let it evaporate by one quarter. It's gonna thicken up, it's gonna to stick to the shrimp fantastically. So when we come back, we're throwing our liver on the grill, we're throwing the shrimps on the grill, and we got a little fishy something out there that's bound to drive those ladies in the secretarial pool wild. Robert, what is a briquette? Mais oui, uh, he is the chef of uh, Red Hot and Ready, uh, Jean Briquette. Pest? Oh, the briquette. Des briquettes, ce sont de petits morceaux de charbon noir qu'on allume avec du carburant et des allumettes qui font pouf pouf et on grille des choses. Hey, Tom, what's a tandoor? 
Goddamn ten dollars coming over here, taking our jobs, stealing our women. I will not have any of it. So Joshua, what's up with tongs? What are they anyway? Well, Melissa, in any you know healthy adult relationship, you know the tong is used basically like. Oh, suddenly I feel itchy and uncomfortable. Uh, tongs are uh, a system of levers, cantilevers, and pulleys that uh, help you pick up and put down food. All right, Lucy, your word is jerk. Okay, but like when you say jerk, do you mean like jerk like when you take a dog for a walk and they're running away from you, you're like, whoa, whoa, come back, and they're like, whoa, 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 and they pull you and you fall down, or do you mean jerk like, oh, I showed up four hours late for dinner and you made a gourmet thing, but I had pizza, and what? I didn't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, Lucy, your word is jerk. Well, actually, Melissa, jerk is something that originated from Jamaica. It's a blend of chilies and spices and onions, and it's actually rubbed into your pork, but usually <laughs> without adult supervision. What do you think about tandoor? Well, they're really big in my house. I mean, I guess we use them every family gathering that we have, especially when we like to play a little game that we call Patty Hurst. So, Bruce, what do you know about barbecuing? Barbecuing. I'm sick and tired of you carnivores. Barbecuing all this animal flesh, this dead animal flesh. What you need is some good tofu. Vegetarians of the world, unite! So, hey, Pig, what do you think of barbecuing? <coughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't lose your head over it. Hey, has anybody seen Miles? I can't find him. Hey, Miles, what's a marinade? Um, a marinade breaks down the fibers in meat and flavors it at the same time, so you have tender, tasty eats. If I promise to behave and listen to mistress, can I come down? <laughs> What's a tandoor? I don't know. I'm a pretty clean living guy, really. We're here with Linda. She's a part of our culinary staff here on Red Hot and Ready. So, Linda, what do you think a dry rub is? Well, actually, it reminds me of high school. <laughs> but uh, it's actually a mixture of herbs and spices that you rub into the meat for flavor. Hey, Cracker, what time is it? It's basting time, sweetheart. Basting is the fresh juice from hot meat being applied back to it to keep it tender and juicy. Hey, baby, you be the tenderloin, and I'll be your basting brush. Hey, Tom, what's a tandoor? Uh, tandoor is a clay oven uh, from India. It uh, burns about 600 degrees Fahrenheit and is used for cooking all of their meats and vegetables. So Tom, what do you think about satay? You mean where you've got the leather and the handcuffs and you take two monkeys and give them nipple clamps and tie them up together in a small room? Dirty, dirty boys. Oh, satay. Satay is an Indonesian meat dish prepared on skewers and cooked over hot coals. <laughs> But I look at stuff like this and I'm like, man, the universe is an incredibly complex place. You look at one of the most, the lowest forms of, of life on the planet and that, that's when you get the revelation that it's a really complex universe. Yes, yeah, so on the set of Red Hot and Ready, we're not just uh, meatheads with a bad sense of humor, we actually right. think about the universe. Yeah, yeah, as long as we don't have any women tracking us down. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guess what guys, we're at the grill. Guess what I'm doing? It's cornbread time. We've been cooking here. In the residual heat, or pardon me, the indirect cooking method, we got the heat turned off on this side, it's been on this side, and we have a temperature of about 300 degrees. This has turned out beautifully. This has been about 40 minutes in here, and this is ready to go. I think we just dump this out. There we are. And before I actually hit the sauce, I think I need a little piece just to, uh, as I say, lay down that base. Look at that. Oh, man. Look at that. Robert, what do you think about that? It looks great. Do you want to try a piece? Sure. There you are. It's got cheese in it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, stupendous. We're making an artichoke, cream cheese, and basil spread to go with our pre de bread. Pre de bread, that's right, you heard it first here. Got some cream cheese, about a cup and a half of cream cheese. We got one tin, 12 ounce tin of artichoke hearts. Got those drained. We got some Emmental cheese, Just about half a cup there. Got a clove of minced garlic. That's going in, you know that. Funny thing about garlic, it's used for, never mind. <clears throat> okay, I'll tell you. I had a girlfriend who used to shove it, eh, never mind. Okay. She used to actually take it and insert it into her holiest of holies to prevent yeast infections from reoccurring. And it worked. You are so, so, <laughs> so dirty. We put some, uh, about 10 anchovy fillets, Quarter cup of basil in there. Just gonna turn the baby on. 
Whoa, look at it go. Get in on that, guys. You don't want to miss this. <clears throat> okay. About 20 seconds in the processor. That's plenty long enough, okay? Stick your finger in there. Shove it in your gob. Mmm. That's art artichoke dandy. A little bit of pepper. Grab the... Grab the lid, start it up again. Now it's ready. We're gonna take our pita bread here. We're gonna cut into it. And separate the two halves, right? This is very simple. A trained monkey could do this. No cracker, you can't try it. Okay, now that we've busted this puppy open here, okay, we've got our artichoke and cream cheese dandy here and we're spreading it on the pita bread, the one half of the pita bread. Spread it out to about a quarter of an inch within the edge of it. Take the other piece, lay it on top. Then you say, hey kids, look, it's artichoke dandy sandwiches. Cut them to triangles. Simple as that. Hey, baby, want to meet me in the broom closet for some artichoke dandy? Oh, that's not what I do best. And you say, hey, kids, frisbee. Oh, my god. You probably noticed we have a couple bivalves sitting around. That'd be the clams. We got some soft shell or steamer clams. We're going to put these puppies straight on the grill. Well, this is going to be a really cool appetizer that we're going to actually serve on the shell of the clam itself. I'm going to steam all these guys open. I'm going to get them cleaned out. Crank this baby right up. That's going to take about 15, 20 minutes before they open. A very simple sauce, OK? We got one chopped seeded tomato. That's right. OK, we got some celery salt going in here. That's about a teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons. Got some lemon juice, juice of half a lemon. Squeeze it over your hands, okay? Make sure you catch the seeds. A little bit of hot sauce. As much as you like of this. I happen to like a lot, so I'm gonna use a lot. Worcester sauce, a couple dashes, and one cup of vodka. Straight in there. Pinch of sea salt. And there you go. Mmm, chunky. When we come back, the liver's going on the grill, the shrimp's going on the grill, we're playing with the clams. And speaking about clams, I wonder what's going on with those girls in the secretarial pool. It's all about me. Guys, you want the clams? We got the clams. Totally beardless, okay? Here we go. We are going to take these off. Look at this, look at this. Oh man, just look at this. This is beautiful. This is like, they're perfectly steamed open. They're not scorched. Okay, yeah, there you are. You can hold that for me, too. There we are. You take these off. We've got to let them cool. Okay, I'm going to use my hands here because it's a lot faster. Ow, 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 ow. Why the hell are these guys such idiots? By the way, that's not recommended. Be sticking your hands onto the grill. Not good barbecuing technique. But I can do that because I'm the barbecue master. Just gonna give this a little bit of a wipe. Get rid of all this seawater that spewed out of these uh, bivalves. Crank the heat right back up. This is a very important step, okay, guys? Because the next thing you throw on here, if you don't clean it off, it's just gonna stick, you know? Done. We've got our shrimps. We've got our liver. And we're gonna put this on, but we're not gonna grease it down, right? Because it's covered in bacon. On with the liver. Got a shrimp, similarly wrapped in their bacon suits. The one addition that'd be good here is perhaps a little bit of cracked black pepper. While doing this, you want to stay back a bit. Robert's going to probably catch the full brunt of this. You throw uh, you throw peppercorns on a grill, man. The smoke that comes up is is really acidic, almost. You know. A little bit more over here. You getting that yet, Robert? Yeah? 
There we are. Hey, Cracker, what time is it? Time traveling. We'll turn these over. Just loosen them up slightly on the grill. And baboom. Once the bacon is cooked, the shrimp should be cooked about perfectly, OK? Shrimp really only need to be cooked until they change color to a solid pink. I have to get a little bit more uh, delicate with the, uh, with the livers here. Liver is such a delicate meat that if you're too tough with it, it just falls apart, turns into goo. OK, I'm just going to walk over here now. And I'm going to get Melissa, because I know Melissa likes the liver. OK, man, this party is going to rock. This is going to be great. Are you done the food? Oh, man, look at this. Check it out. Check it out. It's almost there. Mm. We got our bacon wrap liver. And we're putting that over here. Mm -hmm. What is this? This is bacon wrapped chicken livers that we've soaked in sherry, soya sauce. And what are these things here? Check those out. Those are your favorite, are right? What are these they? are artichoke cream cheese stuffed pita dandies. Mm, they're my new favorite. Yum. OK. One last thing I have to do before, honest, I can't wait to get this party the same as you. I just have We're to glaze these things. The shrimp. That's right. This is a rum no. mountain glaze. I'm the barbecue master. OK, look at this. We got some clams over here, too. Uh huh. The beards have been removed. And what are those large, long contraptions coming out of the shell? Well, uh, that's a little something we like to call the clammy John Thomas. <laughs> I knew it looked familiar. <sighs> so, uh, <laughs> this looks like some good cornbread. Yeah, that's cornhole stuffing. Mm. It's cheesy and it's really spicy. And it's a hell of a stuffing. There's corn and there's bread, so therefore, cornbread. Yeah, I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to this party. I've been, man. What? what? You know you're not going to party, right? You're just the help. That's <laughs> because I read I'd known you. The home of smoky good eats. <laughs>